Level 60 Alpha and Conquest of Azeroth is finally upon us. The wait is over and we can finally fully dive deep into the realm of Azeroth with brand new 21 classes. Today we begin a journey of conquest on Project Ascension as a Crusader Templar to embrace the teachings of the Scarlet Monastery and purge all evil from these lands. From the all 21 classes, I have chosen Templar to be my first character to try out on level 60. And oh boy, that was a perfect choice. The playstyle of the Crusader spec is a, such an amazing experience. I didn't have so much fun on a class from a hell of a long time. If you're not aware, initially on Conquest of Azeroth, there was supposed to be a Blade Master class, which was an iteration of kind of an orc monk with a two handed weapon with some mobility and stealth stuff that was critting for crazy amounts with very powerful for crit effects. Eventually core developers figured out that monk and demon hunter classes are pretty boring because not so many people choose it due to the fact that they are not kind of original but they didn't really take a look at the specs so maybe that's why they were not so appealing according to the developers. So all in all the blade master spec the whole monk spec has been turned into the Templar which are literally warriors of the Scarlet crusade which is basically known to all in the world of warcraft universe but thankfully they didn't entirely scrap the blade master idea and what we have now is a two-handed crusader that can deal shit tons of damage with some very very cool mechanics like i said i didn't have that much fun in a long time in world of warcraft and this is all thanks to this specialization i do admit that i didn't get all the specs to level 60 before the release but the ones i tried like primalist or knight of soroth in my opinion are nowhere near the fun aspect that the Crusader Templar gives us. We, we have been basically turned into an agile Crusader warrior, kind of a mixture of Blade Master and Paladin that can bladestorm like every 20 second when talented correctly. Shit tons of amounts of AoE damage, crazy mobility. It's just freaking so fun to play. I cannot stress this enough. Playing the specs feels really smooth. I'm not even talking about any numbers just yet because this is all due to be changed, changed in the future. But of course, the numbers are pretty dope as well. And you basically only need like two indicators to play this spec very efficiently like you see on my screen there's two things popping above and below my character so the basic premise of this build is that we have a combo system that allow us to generate a stack with our templar blade that further powers up our ability and allow us to use the combo breakers which are ultimately the most powerful things when it comes down to our offense and you can build your character in such a way that you don't really have to use that much of a templar strike to generate follow-ups because other attacks and things that you use in standard rotation basically allow us to use follow-ups more often and stack enough follow-ups to use the combo breaker which is our most powerful attacks bladestorm for example to name a few a thousand blades of two very powerful aoe attacks that also deal crazy amounts of single target damage as well for the moment you can say that it's pretty op probably the numbers may need to be tuned down but this is still too early initially from classes i've checked already like most of them are able to reach around 1k dps on level 60 so i don't know for me this is kind of balanced but eventually we'll see how, it, how it's gonna go. So basically in simple words we just use less powerful attacks that seem powerful enough to me to stack up the appropriate combos to be able to unleash those powerful mighty attacks that destroy your enemies. This AoE heavy uh, playstyle because we also have that lesser AoE, we have two big AoEs and basically one of the skills that we're using uh, to build, ex build up stacks is also allowing use to hit an aoe with those lesser attacks which basically creates very aoe heavy playstyle that is so freaking cool to play that i cannot stress it enough the other 
spec that we can use on this one is Zealot. It's basically dual wielding Paladin Monk Ibert. That is kind of more follow up heavy, but it seems to be doing similar amount of DPS. Although I do prefer to play as an uh, Templar, so as a Crusader, mainly because of Blade Storm and kind of a Blade Master playstyle. Uh, if you watch me for some time, you probably have seen that my like initial video on Ascension or the second one, the one that I started the adventure mode, was kind of a dream to create kind of a Blade Master. So it's even better for me that this spec turned out to be so freaking cool to play. But enough of the class, we're gonna see how it's gonna perform and unfold as we play it. So initially I started to see that there are a lot more people actually playing and trying out Koa, so I really wanted to take a look. How does the PvP look like? And the very first step we took, of course, we popped or all of the auras of experience potions and went straight up into the mana storms to get around level 55 56 to get some upper hand in the battlegrounds and see how the crusader will fare on the battlefield against players unfortunately mana storms are still the most efficient way to level up which is kind of a shame i mean for progression mana storms are pretty cool this is a very cool mode for end game on a loon it does actually play its role perfectly but i think that that, you know, the realm name is Conquest Azeroth. The scaling numbers and all that kind of stuff and jazz is still yet to be balanced, so I don't take everything for granted, although it would be nice to actually make the world more meaningful and significant, you know, like the classic saying that sounds like enjoy the journey, the meaningful journey, things like that. So it would be really great to actually fully experience that journey with all of the new classes on that meaningful journey but it is that it is for the moment i just hope that the high risk will actually get more lively with all the classes available now i'm not yet sure how does the balance look on level 60 of course but you know with classes being balanced all around i think the overall experience in pvp should be better because not only your gear will matter more now and of course the build itself as well but you know previously like on a loon you had to have some really good lock or certain spells to be able to rock in pvp of course like i mentioned a couple of times already there's actually no way to balance everything perfectly so i still do realize that there will be like meta specs and stuff like that but as long as we have at least one specialization each class that does exceptionally well in pvp i will be really happy so far for the moment what i see crusader has like defensive cooldowns offensive cooldowns mobility hit tons of damage and the only thing that we actually are missing a little bit is the healing department but there are kind of a ways to reset everything and heal up a little bit so it's kind of cool but eventually we have dinged level 57 look at this the guy just got deleted completely and I'm still circling around. <laughs> it seems that PvP is being extremely bursty. So I guess the gear with the resilience and a lot of PvP power and defensive uh, will be mandatory for level 60. Probably the numbers should be tuned down a little bit as well. But yeah, for the moment we can just enjoy the burst fest, literally. The next BG we got into was Hillsbred Good Hills. Running around this place was a pain in the ass and a 60% mount. And the first clash that we actually get into was my YOLO attempt to blade storm everything that got onto my site. I burned all my defensive and offensive cooldowns unfortunately it didn't exactly work out as intended. <laughs> okay it seems that the ranged classes in core are being pretty damn powerful when it comes down to PvP and I can tell you that the primalist is pretty damn cool. I did level 1 to level 50 as well and their caster spec has so many instant cast spells that it's probably one of the best when it comes down to player versus player interactions. One very big downside of the Crusaders is that when you start blade storming or doing the thousand blades, you basically cannot use any of your like defensives, which means that oftentimes you have to actually break your burst to live. But on the other hand, those are on a very short cooldowns, so it's not so bad. But I also noticed that all the classes have some crazy mobility things. As even though I do have some movement speed reduction, 
missions, it was still pretty hard for me to connect to some targets. But all in all, Templar has a pretty good toolkit for PvP. We've got that reflection, we've got uh, disarms, we've got like dodges, range dodges, we've got immunity, we've got very nice mobility that is mostly targeted and cast on self, which are movement speed increases. So mobility wise is also pretty good. Although the Crusader's Leap has a pretty slow animation and it's very easy to avoid it actually. I can clearly see that PvP will be very interesting on Koa, mainly because this is not only the Crusader or Templar toolkit that is so rich. I can constantly see people getting some immunities and stuff like that, so it's gonna be so freaking amazing like learning the game, all the classes, day by day, the interactions, the cooldowns they can use against you. It's gonna be so freaking fun. And there we go guys, finally level 60. That wasn't really that hard. Okay, so it seems that on level, fresh level 60, as a crusader, I reach almost 2k DPS, with Righteous Tempest being one of my most damaging ability. Each tick can crit up to 2000 Vindication crits for 2000 each hit 1000 blades. Kind of weaker, but it's so good and also can cleave, so even better. There's Hammer Dot ticking for almost 600. In AoE, we can easily reach about 4000 DPS, which is pretty damn cool, to be honest. But that actually means that with the gear, we can probably reach about 10k single target and probably up to like 40k AoE with things as it is. Of course, this can still change, but for the moment, this is the case. It's 12 o'clock in the night and look how many people are actually in Orgrimmar. And I think there's like at least quadruple of this or something because most of the people are farming dungeons for the moment. I would also love to try out more PvP, but we would actually need to farm some Bloodforge gear. There are actually normal daily quests available for Kalbot Cacius that we can complete and all the mythic heroic stuff that we usually do. And the fun thing is that the daily quests for today are actually a fight against the Scarlet Crusade, <laughs> which I'm kind of a part of. Unfortunately, with my current level, item level 28, I couldn't even do to any of the like heroics or something. I need at least 40 to be able to do so. So this leaves me with either daily quests quests and some cardboard caches or mana storm farms are not really giving me that many rewards especially on such a low level i don't know if this is a bug but apparently i cannot like progress the mana storm but of course we'll see we'll see let's go and have a look at the daily quests for the moment it seems that there are not so many people doing the daily quests so although and came down to the fight with the zealot anselm which is a big lead boss for those daily quests some comrades nearby would probably make things a lot easier although there was none so I just simply had to retreat with song of glory on my mouth then in the tower nearby I managed to stumble upon a rogue I'm sorry a reaper <laughs> this guy was able to go invisible so you know the old habits always strike you the most so yeah, I was really close to catch him off guard, and we started a fight on the top of the tower. He tried to retreat, so jumped down. I continued my glorious holy chase, and I got tunnel vision so much that he popped some defensive, shielded against my radiant blade storm, and caught me back off guard with a couple of swift strikes that I did not withstand. And my scarlet crusade ended very quickly. So waiting a very long time for respawns, the rogue um the the reaper striked once again so then we had another fight it lasted a little bit longer but i don't know why the next two du two duels basically he was like 10 or 20 percent health near death and i dealt like almost no damage to him and he finished me off once more then i noticed that he had some strange buff named nullify or something like that that reduces his damage taken by 75 percent this is probably the thing that does not allow me to kill him. But either way, those were pretty good duels, I would have to say. Like I mentioned before, we still have to learn all the classes once more from scratch, what they do, what to do against them, which is basically pretty damn cool in my opinion. 
But yeah, I basically finished like four quests and decided to go back to Orgrimmar because it's going to take forever. I completely forgot that the cardboard caches give you random stuff, not the ones that you need. So if you're spec into agility, it's going to change nothing. You're still going to get some strength stuff, which will make gearing a little bit harder. So farming mana storms seems to be the best choice for the moment, as at least it's going to give me the gear I need. So agility, attack power, especially that I need to farm those mana storms from level one. So it should be pretty quick. Thankfully, I managed to stumble upon a greedy demon that dropped me some epic stuff, and I managed to up my item level by 10. So we only needed 1.5, so eventually I just didn't want to farm and bought myself a Twig of the World 3 for 35 gold. Was a very slow weapon with nice statistics, good damage, and as good as my bloodied Arcanid Reaper. Unfortunately, uh, heirlooms does not give any item level whatsoever, so we had to downgrade our weapon and damage to be able to enter some of those. Hopefully we're gonna get an upgrade very soon and we will be able to forget about this weapon. So with item level of 42 we have finally managed to enter some random classic heroic dungeons so let's find a group. So while trying to find some Bloodforge gear in tier 1 high risk with no luck whatsoever finally the beautiful dungeon finder popped so I have waited any longer. I haven't been waiting any longer and we went straight in into the Scarlet Monastery, which means that after a long journey, I'm finally able to visit my homeland. So our first heroic in Conquest of Azeroth showed that the damage I thought I would be dealing is not really the case and there are some people that are already doing some crazy damage. <laughs> I kind of got PTSD after playing a loon and seeing those high numbers and it seems that actually it's gonna be the same case with Hoa unless the numbers will be tuned down but it's just an alpha so let's be patient. In the next stockade I actually did manage to win the DPS race but unfortunately I lost the burning war axe it would be such an amazing upgrade for me but it's really a shame I was not able to grab it. Overall, it seems that even in Heroics, with current DPS, we are not stream rolling through the content, which is pretty good. The bosses actually do take some time to kill, although we are on pretty low level yet. But I think that's how it should look like when you are farming for your initial gear. Although, yeah, this is just a vanilla with some pretty much OP glasses in it. So there are not really any like mechanics or anything like that that you should really care about. Out. so it's just a one big dps race and for the moment we will still have to farm some heroic get some upgrades and then we'll see where our dps pumpage will lead us to thanks for watching and zug zug